nearly 30 40 interviews mr gandhi by all papers so yes. so this is your latest book your first book yeah first book after release of jail and really first book i have not written before i have written articles before but no book see we don't want to touch anything which is subjudice yeah but i want to understand your trajectory into activism so uh, you you were part of adhikar raksha which i read as a young student yeah yeah that was a cpdr committee for protection of democratic yeah, rights yeah, which we uh, helped initiate me and my wife uh, your brother late wife uh, both of us helped initiate the cpdr after the emergency that we did that is uh, late 70s early 80s yeah and it carried on for how long but well, i think it still carries on but i don't know okay. it's active because sebastian was there the pa sebastian pa sebastian but he died after that i don't know what happened it used to be a cyclo style sheet brought out in those days uh, correct yes earlier but because then it was printed much uh, for long it was printed okay. i think jyoti punwani was the editor for yeah long. yeah all these are familiar names yeah she's because, a journalist also yeah yeah i know jyoti i met jyoti i met jyoti yeah. i met jyoti uh, goa is close to bombay and uh, we used to follow the ideological ferment there i see I but see. Uh, you entered student activism in zavias no 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 after i zavias i was a apolitical i went to uk to do ca i was apolitical till then there i came in touch with racism and after coming in touch with racism i started questioning and looking for answers racism against indians huh? not yeah. like a- indians and then i went deeper into the issue then i read marx uh, Uh, I read R. C. Dutt and Dada by Naroji is the freedom struggles and how the drain theory operates. Then uh, finally I read R. P. Dutt's Rajni Pant. That's in this is early seventies. This is early seventies, late sixties, early seventies. Sixty-eight to seventy-two, I was in New Delhi, four years. And uh, then uh, with uh, Rajni Pant, that's uh, understand. Rajni Pant that was the yeah Rajni Pant that was secretary of the C. P. G. B. at one time. And, and Saklatwala also was a member of yeah, the Saklatwala was parliament. Yeah, Rajni Pamdas. Yeah, I'm talking about Rajni Pamdas book India yeah. Today. Uh, India Today. India Today. That to change me to Marxism actually because it gave me an insight into understanding racism from the colonial perspective. Those were years of great ideological ferment and, and a lot of radicalism. Absolutely. All, the over the world, world all over the world. All over the world. World of difference between then and now. So, so uh, now, how do you see things? Are people uh, critical enough? Have they begun see, thinking? See, this book. I've been involved with the communist movement since the fifty years, nearly half a century. Since, since my London days, you can say. Then I gave up my CA. I went to jail there also for fighting racism. In three the UK. Months. In the UK also, I was sentenced for three to three months jail. We were attacked by skinheads, I see. and they implicated me and one or two others. And they. The judge was also racist. The police were racist. Yeah, seventies, seventies was really bad. Worse well, than now. I don't know. God knows. It depends Enoch how sensitive Powell? you are. Enoch Powell. Enoch Powell. Ah, that's the name. I was trying to get that. Rivers name. of Blood. Yes, yes. Rivers of Blood. Yeah. He's but, famous. But you have Le Pen and all in France now. You have the fascists coming and all that. I don't know how much is better or worse. Talking uh, about Le Pen as an aside, not related. My name is Frederick Noronha, and my initials are FN, and I have a Twitter handle called FN. So I get a lot of racist groups. addressing me thinking that i'm uh, the <laughs> national front i see it's anyway that's unrelated but coming back to more I serious issues tell us about your book mr gandhi so actually you know the 50 years i see i've seen a lot of ups and downs in the movement worldwide china was a great inspiration in those days today it's completely one of the largest uh, it's the greatest capitalist power today yeah it's the largest power it's uh, Actually, uh, for World Economic Forum, it seems to be the ideal, the Keynesian sort of state intervention when the crisis of capitalism is there. Uh, Klaus Schwab's and all are giving the example. Sorry, sorry, of, I didn't get that point. Klaus Schwab. No, no, no. China is supposed to be the ideal for Keynesian state. For as a Keynesian sort of, uh, to, as an alternative to the neoliberal, there are two forms of capitalism. No, neoliberal, Keynesian. Keynesian is basically state, 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 state intervention, and that's what China is doing. Okay. And it's grown like successfully. Anything. It's been a very successful uh, project uh, that way as a Keynesian project. So, very I've seen economists, uh, bourgeois left economists, also giving China as a model. Even uh, World Economic Forum does that, give China as the model. I see. So, but anyway, that's uh, not here in the book. Okay, I the book is on. I will deal with that separately when uh, I deal with Corona capitalism. Uh, I've already written articles on that, but uh, the Great Reset and uh, all those things. But here, what I'm trying to bring out is that. why in, in just my lifetime 
when half the world was communist then now today nothing is communist left nothing is left is it time and for a different form of the left for a different less no hard uh, let me say, uh, tell you uh, you know what i'm saying uh, and uh, it's a completely set back even in india worldwide india when you take the revolutionary trend or you take the parliamentary trend all are practically irrelevant today the country so, needed which you would think needs it so more. i've tried to analyze the reason for that and i've gone at the micro level basically i said that the approach i have given that people have attacking me like anything including him including him uh, <laughs> advocate jatin nai he said he'll take me up in the meeting okay uh, tomorrow that's good but uh, even our mouth circles and all are attacking like mad i've given the concepts that that there should be internal change if you are not internal change then you get small element of power and that goes to your head in and what you sense become internal change like you should have uh, be modest you should be uh, straight forward you should be selfless you should not want uh, ego problem should be there and i given my w- late wife anuradha as the model because she had all these qualities straight forward natural no pretenses i mean it's all there the values that i say are the ideal values which are were in her in my late wife anuradha unfortunately anuradha died very early anuradha gandhi gandhi anuradha shanbagh ex uh, she okay. was her brother is a well known theatre artist he comes to go all Who? the time asunil chanbagh so anyway but to, uh, i have given a portrait as the model human being and as a communist even in this book it's uh, presented like that at the values but i say that these values are all known but why are communists not able to get it there is criticism self criticism there is uh, rectify you know, nothing has been valid i've seen it for 50 years nothing has been practiced uh, nothing has been practiced the same rotten elements come the good people get hurt when he goes through birth nervous breakdown and leave so i brought in the concepts of freedom and happiness should be also incorporated in any communist or left or progressive project i read a mention review of, of your book i think i read a review of your book or mention books. of it mention of it in times or one of the every papers, papers covered it every happiness karan thapar interviewed barkha that interviewed everyone after that everyone's interview Yeah. but uh, i have brought in these concepts which are not taken by many of the marxist circles and but i have defended that even but in the left in its heyday was very fractured and splint, splintered wouldn't you agree in that sense? yeah but why is that that's what I, another point i'm going into this uh, fracture because of ego problems of leaders uh, it's not because uh, what's the point also uh, some so conspiracy many groups, so ml of, groups yeah. and say ml they about 20 in india even now earlier also why is that what's the purpose is just the ego problem everyone seems to have the same program and, and there's no question of changing unless you change yourself internally that's what i uh, feel and you can do build big movements bring uh, big revolutions even you can soviet union came china came and finally it reversed so what is the purpose of course uh, its a purpose is gained in china so something like 40 mi- billion people have been left out of poverty by the economy but are they happy that's another question so uh, socialism is the most viable project economically i mean there's no question of that even as uh, a chartered accountant you're saying that i i left my chartered accountancy i gave it up yeah. <laughs> but i know all the, all about chartered accountancy no problem <laughs> even as that i know about ca i did my first exam also i passed with a, one of the top percentages also in uk in uk yeah in the first there three in, exams intermediate Into, yeah uh, in one of the first into yeah, 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 the yeah. second two i didn't i dropped okay. i left them but uh, i and my uh, people who i was article clerk to uh, yeah, jackson pickley the company they were very happy with my work i was one of their best auditors i see <laughs> so i was generally good at studies and things and then, like that and then you've taken to auditing society and politics Yeah, I think it's more the society. After that, it's more fruitful. I think. But but but, but uh, the state won't doesn't take too kindly to that now. I was ten years in jail. That's the whole book. Prison diary made ten years in jail. Though I was not convicted of a single charge, I was acquitted of every charge. Yeah. And I've got one or two cases. I've got bail. Otherwise, you in UAPA you don't get bail. It's very so tragic because because because, because, time because those time that time can never be got back. Yeah, but I used that time fruitfully. Also, I wrote you a lot did. of articles from jail. I did my you did your law. That. You did your law. No, no, no. I hate law. I I have lawyers, good lawyers. They all work free. Like this, and like this gentleman. Yeah, like this gentleman. I'm a lawyer only in Goa. Yeah, okay. and I have in Andhra, in Delhi, Delhi's top lawyer, Rebecca John, did my case free. Now they've challenged my case in the High Court, my acquittal. 
she is again fighting free. Rebecca John, really a good person, really good, and she has such a huge team of people. She's one of Delhi's top lawyers. But uh, people, I have had good people. I have fortunately had very good judges also. Tell me about the I book. I mentioned out here. What are the chapters of the book? What See, there are three sections. First section is on uh, Anuradha and Mind's history, how we came to this politics, and uh, where we worked a little bit on how we worked among Dalits in Maharashtra, Nagpur, Bombay, all that work. She went to the, the uh, Bastar area also for two, three years, that experience she had in short given. And it was after, uh, the, so the first section basically deals with our life story. The second section is my jail diary. People I met in jail, the jail conditions, the legal process, why I dragged on for 10 years without any conviction. The whole jail process second. The third question is the philosophical point of what has gone wrong with our movements, communists, and an alternative, and a hope for the future. And obviously this, it struck a chord. Uh, because I have not used, I have treated it as a humanity, I have not seen it as a Marxist alternative or anything. And I have portrayed it as a hope. It must have been struck a chord because it was on the bestseller list of Amazon for so long. Amazon for two India. years. Amazon India. Yeah, for bestseller list. And it sold so well. I mean, Roli is a big publishing house. Yeah. And Roli. the ones who sponsored it here, yeah. sponsored me here. And. Uh, I think they are also very happy with the sales. Uh, they didn't. Also, I certainly didn't expect such a response. And now I am translating it in all Indian languages. It's already out in Marathi, which is here. Uh, it's out in Bengali, it's out in Punjabi. Hindi and Tamil will be out within a month or so, and Kannada. Then Telugu, Malayalam, and uh, in, even Urdu I'll try. Wow. Uh, so all these languages will be out. So. I am trying to reach for, I am trying international also, Spanish and all that, the people are approaching. Because there is a lot of left movement in, True. social democratic movement in Latin America. Latin America. Yeah. And also to some extent Europe. Yeah. So, they are also getting some response. So, I am surprised at the sort of thing. So, that means people really want to know. It's not, in my own Parsi community, has supported me to the hill. <laughs> Which is a very affluent and well-to-do yeah, community. And they're totally against uh, this type of uh, policy, but not as uh, ideologically. Okay. They don't support ideologically. They support as a as human, humanitarian cause. Yeah, humanitarian cause that we sacrifice, sacrifice everything. I gave all my property up. I gave everything up for uh, the poor people of the country. I think that is struck a chord. Even I noticed with the police and you know, when I was they in jail. They have respect, certain respect. Except Delhi. Everywhere else I got a lot of respect. I see. From even police officers really? and others. Yeah. Not in Delhi. <laughs> Delhi, Delhi is a different animal, different beast. Absolute. The jail authority, the police authorities were rough and crude. But uh, judges were superb, my lawyers were superb. That, that is there. Human rights people were extra in Delhi. But the authorities were there. But the authorities, even Gujarat. Gujarat, I was last case, well, last I came out finally from Surat. I see. Excellent police officers, oh, excellent see. judges. Which is surprising. Well, yeah. That's what the stereotype. Yeah, and, uh, that's what I want to say. Punjab, I, I, I had a small case in Punjab also. Yeah. They took me. Uh, I linked Punjab police with the mafia, the drug mafia, and this and that. I no. couldn't have got better treatment out there by the police. Such excellent. Uh, so, uh, I don't know. Everyone's human beings, and they do respect, I think, people, except maybe the really corrupt, like that I saw in Delhi. They can understand you yeah. at a different level. Yeah, at a different level. They're not as a political law, political yeah, person, yeah, yeah, yeah. but as a human uh, sacrificing yeah. for the Sacrifice people of the is, country, is the uh, poor of the country. That way, I got a lot of uh, uh, support and respect that I found amongst non-political people. Mr. Gandhi, last question: uh, What, what, what do you think are the three main issues facing the country today? Well, first is economics. I feel. We had uh, adopt like Dadabhai Nauroji and uh, uh, BC, RC Dutt and all these people the said. The is still going on. The drain, the drain is still going on. So I believe if they really implement Swadeshi, the economy will change. But if they don't do that and they allow the loot, which is I think much greater, than, I'm trying to do a research on that also, a book on that. Uh, greater than no, colonial times. There's no pro the, the country will never progress. So they implement Swadeshi, what they're saying. They talk about Swadeshi, but they don't implement, they implement the opposite. That's the first economic. The second aspect, uh, I basically think the two really major aspects is the uh, social aspect. 
the uh, radical uh, domination of the country, which is in, in, uh, we have a very rich history on the non brahmin movement. I've just bought her books from here on even Goa. I that, see. That, but what? Uh, the first chief minister. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just bought his book. No, no, uh, that's my book. That's yeah. your. I just yeah. bought the book from here. Yeah. He brought it especially for me. On that, even here I noticed. So I'm trying to study it here. We have such a history of the non brahmin movement, right from the Lokayats, the Bhakti movement, Buddhism, all that. That tradition is our democratic tradition, not uh, uh, the Manusmati and the uh, uh, Gita and all these things which is taken as Hinduism. This is also Hinduism, but it's the progressives, the democratic tradition. Marxists have ignored it. We take the Soviet model, we take the Chinese model, we don't take our Indian history. So I feel the second aspect and the most important aspect because Brahmanism has been used by all ruling classes, whether Muslim, British, Indian, the present law. Whoever's in power. Whoever's in power. It's an ideal thing. It divides everyone and it's elitist. So what more could the, any ruling class want? So, and we have, and we have such a strong non-Brahman tradition, as to be Marxists have totally ignored it, whether it's CPI, CPM or even Maoists. So they've socialists all, uh, have been a little more conscious to it maybe? Socialists have to some extent, but socialists don't have a real alternative. So yeah, Loya and all these people have taken it up. And well, communists also took it up. Didi Kosambi and all had yeah. written uh, the best, the, the Devapada Chattapada they have. But they have not internalized it into our mainstream of their political life. Some had, they had the best of academic CPI had. Uh, this Devapada Chattapada and we are using their books now to basically to study. We are not studying from scratch. We want to write a whole history of the non brahman movement and incorporate into the life of the people. Because that's people's tradition. Yesterday I saw a program, you know, out here, that people's culture, it was sort of... Like that everywhere is people's culture. That this Brahminical culture is not people's culture. It's been enforced today by Hindutva, but even by the other earlier Congress and every ruling class is used it. In subtle or not so subtle ways. So, yeah, exactly. In subtle or not so subtle ways. And really this, these two points in India takes up. Swadeshi, both of which are <laughs> present dispensation talk about. And not Hindutva, but the progressive elements of Hinduism and Islam also. The Sufi tradition is very strong in Kashmir and Bengal, I notice. So these progressive democratic traditions which are part of the people's life, life folk music is there, folk culture is there. In Bengal, I uh, heard that the Chaitanya and the Sufi tradition called Fakiri and Baal tradition. Uh, yesterday I saw in Goa also a part of some, it's not folk, but it was uh, people's traditions uh, out there, which is, they're trying to revive, they said, that uh, this thing. So that means all, that's also there. So the, the Sanskritization is, and pushing out Sanskrit by all the rulers, that is killing this tradition. They don't, no one talks about it, nor the communist, communist or Marxist. That's our, our failing, actually. We, as, as Marxists, we should have taken forward this great democratic tradition. So I feel if these two, as I forget third, I don't know, third, yeah. okay, maybe corruption linked to this. But uh, basically these two aspects have implemented in India and you can have a world of uh, change. Swadeshi and uh, the non-Brahmin cultural social tradition. Thank you. Thanks, okay. Atant, for your time. Thank you. All the best. <laughs> yeah.